Jesus said in Luke chapter 20, verse 25, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. You know, just about every preacher on this earth uses that passage, and a few others, to confirm we must keep the church separate from the state as well as the politics and corruption of government. And those that teach prophecy know that the USA is actually the second beast of revelation and especially evil and therefore clearly not a safe government for pastors to ever join in a legal binding contract with. The purity of the church should never mingle with the worldliness of men who have a bloodlust for power over their fellow men. Now, as we know, the USA was founded on biblical principles. Our forefathers knew of the evil fruits of Roman Catholicism and how its church and state coupling allowed the Pope's absolute power, which fostered absolute corruption. To the point, hundreds of millions of Christians were tortured and killed by the Vatican, as well as the state that followed the orders of their Lord God, the Pope, who then forced their pagan religion upon all, using terrorist tactics on those poor souls that feared the stake and the rack of the Vatican's Inquisition. And so, many obedient Christians, with the means to do so, fled with their families to form a new nation under God, as was prophesied right here in America. But as was also prophesied, Satan would use the Vatican to eventually infiltrate the nation's leaders, as well as the churches, so as to get the nation to eventually move the church pastors into the arms of the state in direct opposition to the command of Jesus Christ, who, of course, was Rome's main target and enemy, as per the prophetic word. And as was also prophesied regarding the preachers of filthy lucre, all Satan had to do was convince the church leaders they could make more money at tax time if they joined their churches with the government that prophecy declared will be the first nation on earth to enforce the mark of the Roman Catholic beast. Now that the end times draw to a close, we see Satan has moved all the churches, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to disobey Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised heaven-sent blessings if the churches stayed obedient and kept the church and state separate. As expected, the wolves in leadership and on the pulpits chose to obey the government of the second beast who promised them cold, hard cash if they forfeited their allegiance to Christ and signed on to the long-prophesied 501c3 contract that was purposely designed to join their churches and ministries with the state, thereby fulfilling the prophecy that declared they would create an image to the church and state structure of the beast in Rome. And as per President George W. Bush's own pen on March 7, 2006, which just happened to be used on the exact same day the first Sunday laws were passed under Constantine 1,685 years ago, Bush penned the first executive order in favor of granting the pastors power to lobby religious law. That very day, every pastor was officially recognized as an agent of the state under the 501c3 contract. I mean, Bush even called them state agencies on that day. And just last month, on December 22nd, President Trump made all 501c3 pastors permanent agents of the state by signing it into law. Worse yet, some of these pastors have very lucrative ministries, and so they decided to sign on to a second 501c3 contract under their own ministries, thereby doubling the transgression against the Lord by being under the General Conference 501c3 on one paycheck and under their own 501c3 on another paycheck. And you can check out your favorite Seventh-day Adventist minister by going to this website you see on the screen. All that being said, I have a question to ask of the dear Seventh-day Adventist people who still love the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think your pastors need to step down? Do you finally see what the obedient people of God that left your church have seen for years? I mean, there's no getting around what Jesus meant when he said, render unto Caesar the things that be Caesar's and unto God the things that be God's, right? And there's no getting around the fact that every Seventh-day Adventist pastor decided to only render unto Caesar because Caesar offered them cash. And so every Seventh-day Adventist child of God needs to make a decision. Do you follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth, as prophesied for the bride to do? Or do you follow the pastors who follow the cash whithersoever it goeth? Which do you see as the better choice, following Christ or joining hands with those that deny Christ? 2 Corinthians 6.14 clearly says that the Lord's precious and obedient bride must be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? 
The Seventh-day Adventist leaders and pastors do not believe or even obey Jesus Christ as his bride does. For if they did, they never would have signed that contract with the prophesied second beast of Revelation in the first place. Anyone can preach previously defined scripture and echo the messages of the pioneers of old to look good on pulpits to keep those that don't read Bibles in the pews. And so I implore those that do trust the word of God to obey the Lord you love and don't let the wolves double cross you into staying in sin. Preaching mesmerizing sermons and displaying the riches of the sin sick world does not make for a trustworthy man of God. The basic reality here is this. These pastors desire the money gained via the 501c3 contract more than the promised blessings of the Lord you love. Unto them, James chapter 4 verse 4 clearly says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So ask yourselves this question, brothers and sisters. Who do you trust more? The Lord that wrote the Bible? Or those pastors that ignore the Bible he wrote. Thank you for watching. God bless.